Hey everybody, this is Austin and welcome back to my channel. In the last video, we went ahead and tidied up any remaining surface issues that was left over from my machining the body video. We then set the neck and sanded everything up to 220 grit. And we are now at the stage where we can actually go ahead and apply finish and do some fret work. Now I will admit, up until this point, I have been pretty confident in the skills I have needed to build this guitar, such as CAD modeling, CAM programming, CNC machining, woodworking, etc. But Fretwork, that's a new territory for me and definitely a new experience and also the one part of this project I have been dreading the most. Now, I have watched and read as much content as I could get my hands on to learn about this process and so far I feel fairly certain that I'm up to the task. But now that we're so far into this build, there is a lot at stake. But you know, this entire project has been one giant learning experience for me. So I hope that I can get through this critical stage and finally get to assemble and play my guitar. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's go pop some grain, level some frets, and I'll see you at the bench. All right, so before I go ahead and apply a finish, let's quickly talk about what type of finish I'm gonna be putting on here and what are some of the order of operations because I have a couple constraints here up on the neck that means I can't do the entire neck and body all at once. So. From my experience, I've done a lot of projects with walnut and mahogany in the past. They're two of my favorite woods to work with, and I love the way they feel and take or feel and look when you just put oil on them. Um, no poly, no grain filler or anything. I love the way the grain feels. I love the way the oil uh, applies the amber and accentuates the color. And so that's what I'm going to be doing is. I'm actually gonna be using Danish oil with no grain filler. And Danish oil is a little bit new for me. I've never used it before, but I have used boiled linseed oil a lot in the past. And I really like the way boiled linseed oil applies, how easy it is and the way it looks. And my understanding uh, on the differences between Danish oil and linseed oil is that Danish oil is basically linseed oil, but with a couple additives that makes it act a little bit more like a polyurethane. Um, where it gets a little bit harder, accepts a little bit more of a sheen, provides a little bit more protection, but maybe at the cost of not darkening the wood or applying that amber color quite as much as linseed oil, at least with the natural Danish oil. Now I know that Danish oil typically has pigments in it um, and you can choose different varieties. It's kind of like an oil and a stain and a poly kind of all mixed into one. But from my experience with walnut and mahogany and accepting oil, I think it's going to work just fine with a natural color Danish oil. And so again, I'm not going to be doing any grain filling because I like the way the grain feels. And so that's what we're going to be doing there. And then once we apply our first wet coat uh, to get it really soaked into the wood, then we're going to go ahead and um, wet sand it up to a smoother finish, which will kind of partially grain fill it a little bit, but not entirely but it'll uh, make this, the surface a little bit smoother. Now, as for the neck, I have all these copper inlays, and this is what's gonna be a little tricky for me because copper tends to patina fairly quickly when there's no protective barrier on it. And so I know from experience, just even having this guitar around my shop, that after about an hour or so, you can tell that the brushed finish that you put on those inlays tends to darken a little bit. And I want those to appear as bright as possible so they stand out from the fretboard. And I originally wasn't going to oil the fretboard and was going to leave it bare, which is why I sanded it up to 600 grit. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that copper needed a protective barrier over top of it. So we're actually going to be putting the Danish oil on the fretboard as well. And so what that means is that I want to apply this Danish oil as quickly as I can after I've sanded and removed any dust off of the fretboard. Now the fretboard's already sanded, but I just want to apply a little bit of a brushed finish to each one of these inlays and then go ahead and put the oil on. So what that means in practice is that we're going to be doing the body first. I'm going to tape off the neck. We're going to do the body, um, at least the first wet coat, get that all hardened up and then do the neck afterwards. And then once we've got the first coats on the entire guitar, then I'm not quite so worried and I can go ahead and do the rest, the rest of the coats, sanding, etc. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get to it and make that grain pop. So I've got the neck most of the way taped up. Now I left the headstock. Um, but as you can see, I got a, did a pretty good job of getting in those seams there. 
even around those complicated curves. And it's not really that necessary because I'm gonna end up putting oil on it anyway. It just makes it so I don't have to be quite as careful in those areas to get too much on the neck. And the benefit of taping the whole neck, at least most of it, is it allows me to give me something to hold on to without accidentally putting oily fingerprints or anything on there. So I don't put any risk of, you know, I can hold it like this and apply oil if I'd like to, which I don't think I will, but like when I'm flipping it over, I don't have to touch everything. So I think that'll work good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do the back first and then we'll go ahead and do the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some in this glass so it's a little bit easier for later. It's probably way too much, that's okay. I always get more. So I've just got an old t-shirt here that I've cut up and I folded up the inside so that way there's no potential for lint getting on there, although it's not as important uh, with oil as it is with polys or anything like that. Because polys stay on the surface and oils tend to soak into the wood. So we just need to get this nice and dabbed in there. So let's get that nice and saturated. Now I can already tell that it's thinner than boiled linseed oil uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Okay, let's do this. Oh, I love the way mahogany looks when it's got oil on it. It's such a pretty color. Just trying to get a nice liberal coat on this on this first go around. Now you want it to be fairly wet. You don't need to drown the thing, you know, you don't need to put it in a bathtub, but you definitely want to get a lot on there because the wood's gonna soak up a lot. So at least that's my experience. You guys can tell me otherwise in the comments. And then just kind of keep applying it until you don't see the wood soaking any more of it up. Okay, we'll go ahead and go around the sides. Now the end grain is gonna soak up more than the rest, so you're probably gonna have to apply more to the end grain than anywhere else. A little bit more. Go around this other side. And then get this front section here. Now I'm splat, I put too much on this cloth, so I'm splattering some a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm gonna get a little bit inside this cavity cover here, but I'm not gonna go all the way around. I'm just gonna go on this little lip. That's all. I don't really care what's on the full inside there. It's all gonna get covered up anyway. You get that little lip there. I think I got most of it. Yeah. Okay. Make sure this is rubbed in pretty good. Oh, it's already looking so good. Oh, I'm so excited. It's the best part, man. So satisfying to see your work start to finally come into life. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll wipe off the excess and do a second coat. Just let that soak into the wood. Change of plans, I ended up getting some on the front anyway, so we're just gonna go ahead and do the whole front. I'm just gonna hold it at the neck here. Um, I didn't think I would get that much on the but the front side, but I did. So let's, hopefully you guys can see that angle pretty well. Let's get that in the light a little bit better. This walnut looks so good. Make sure we got the whole sides here. Sure we've covered all the grains here. Doesn't look like I missed anything. Okay. I'm gonna touch up that back again since I had to set it down on there. Probably pulled some out. And 
Now I'm just going to kind of keep applying this for a while, I think, until the wood stops taking it. All right, let's see if we can get a beauty shot here in the light. Get some of those reflections going. All right, so I apologize for the camera angles earlier. I was having a very hard time remembering where the camera is, was as I was focused on what I was doing. So here's what the guitar is looking like. You can really see that figure starting to pop. Here's the backside and the front after coat one. Uh, we're doing the 15 minute wait right now. I'm trying not to set it down so I don't have to, or so the paper towels don't take anything from it. But holy cow, that is looking so good. Okay, so before we do coat two, we need to wipe off the excess. It's been about 15 or 20 minutes or so. And we wanna to try to get as much of this off the surface as we can before we move on. Okay, we are ready for coat two. Just gonna pour some more in here. Get this nice and soaked up and get at it. Do a pretty wet coat on the second one as well. See how much we can get the, the wood to take in. I know that setting it down on that is probably bad, but I'll come back around to it and make sure all that's okay. All right, so here's the second coat with all the excess rubbed off. It's looking amazing right now. It's got a slight sheen to it. We'll see how much of that goes away once it hardens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight since the wood isn't really soaking up any more of the Danish oil. Let that dry overnight and come back and we will maybe work on the neck and see if we need to apply a third coat. I don't think I'm going to go too many more than three. Um, I might still do wet sanding. I don't know. We'll have to see what it looks like. I'm kind of loving the way it's looking right now. So that's what it looks like. Let's uh, let's check back in the morning. All right, so it's the next day and we're ready to go ahead and put oil on the headstock, the neck, and the fretboard. Now I went ahead and took some a little small strip of 600 grit sandpaper and put a little bit of a brushed finish on all these uh, inlays. So the inlays are freshly sanded and they are ready to receive their top coat. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and pour some oil. And let's get this going. Now don't worry about the camera here. I am gonna get you guys a close up so you can see this a little bit better. It's just easier for me to work with it like this. Just gonna get each fret individually here and avoid the nut slot. A little bit of a hair there.
Now, I don't really care if I'm getting it on the frets themselves because we're going to end up sanding those and everything later on, so it's no problem. Just trying to make sure I cover all the surfaces of the fretboard on top so we can work on the sides and the back. Getting sure in all these corners of the frets here. There's a couple spots I missed. It's looking pretty good though. Okay. Think I got all of it? Nope, there's a spot right there. Okay, let's go and get the headstock. I'm going to be careful not to get into the nut slot too much. A little bit is okay. I just don't want glue or anything later on to have a problem sticking. Okay, and let's go ahead and get the side here. Trying to get a pretty even coating. Doesn't matter if I get some on the previous sections from yesterday. I'm just gonna wipe it off in a minute anyway. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over a little bit again. Make sure I didn't miss any spots over here. Looks like I did a little bit maybe on the fretboard. Okay. Okay, so that should be the first coat pretty much done. Okay, it looks like the headstock up at the top. Still soaking up some, so we can apply a little bit more. Fretboard is pretty well soaked. There's like almost no spots that have fully soaked it up. Um, I might just do a quick pass over again just to make sure. But I think we're going to be in pretty good shape on the fretboard side. So I just put it on a little bit of a dowel pin right here just to give it kind of a kickstand so it sets up and we'll be just fine. So I'm going to let that sit for about 15 minutes, come back, wipe off the excess, and keep going. Okay, so the fretboard, I'm pretty sure, has soaked in everything that it can. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off, let the mahogany sit a little bit longer. We're going to go ahead and see if we can wipe off most of this fretboard here. Now what I'm hoping is that a small, thin film of the oil will remain on top of the copper, which will help it um, keep from patina uh, having a patina later on. Now, long term, that might be ideal, but not when it's fresh, because copper patina is pretty quickly. So I'm hoping it'll stall that action, at least for quite a while. There's not a ton of excess on here, but it, it, it looks like it's sitting all on the surface, but it is still soaking up a little bit. Okay, and yeah, the back is still soaking up quite a bit. Even though I put a really wet coat on there, that is all soaked up. So we might need to go a third layer here. We'll see. Tell you what though, this is looking phenomenal. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. Really happy, especially this section up here. Um, I thought there was still a bunch of glue spots that I missed. And there is one small glue spot that I missed, but as my mom would say, if you look that, if they look that close, you kick them. So <laughs> there's a small spot that probably only I'll notice, but that's okay. 
This guitar is for me anyway, not a customer. So I'm okay with it. I'm gonna let that sit for probably about 45 minutes and come back and take another look. All right, so it's day three and just want to give you guys a quick update on how it's looking and what I need to do to it still. So I originally only planned on putting two coats, but there are a couple issues with the guitar that I need to sort out. A um, couple small defects and things that happened while I was working on it, which I'll show you guys in a second. But I also want to give you an opportunity to see what it's looking like right now, which is looking fantastic. Um, I love the figure and the color of the grain and everything that's coming through. And I also love the way the copper is being highlighted right now. Um, it really pops against the dark color of this fretboard. However, on this fretboard, it was originally kind of a chocolate and dark brown color. And I really loved being able to see those grain, um, the difference of color in the grain. But as soon as I put on the oil, it just immediately blackened the whole thing. So I did lose some of that grain. Let me grab the light here and see if we can show this a little better. You can still see the grain, but you can't see the difference in color in the grain like you could before. Um, which I'm not exactly happy with, but the benefit of that though is that the copper pops off of it really hard, which is really nice. So I think that's probably a fair trade. So I'm really happy with this, but let me go ahead and flip the guitar over real quick and I'll show you a couple spots that I need to sort out. So over here, you can see right kind of on the transition. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. If I shine the light at just the right angle, so maybe it's not a big deal. There you go. You can kind of see it. So there's a couple spots right there. And what that is is that's actually the oil seeped out of the wood um, as it was drying. And what it ended up doing, there you go. You can see a little better now. What it did is as it was drying, uh, it seeped out of the wood a little bit and it hardened that way. And so I actually can't get those out without sanding it. So even though um, I was originally just going to just put some oil on and go with it, um, I am going to go ahead and do at least a third coat with a light sanding of like 400 grit sandpaper. I'll probably sand with the oil on there as kind of a lubricant and maybe smooth out the surface and maybe slightly grain fill the whole thing. So I think that's gonna be a really good way to fix this. So let's go ahead and get going. All right, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit more Danish oil. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of mineral spirits in there just to kind of thin it out a little bit. See if you guys can see that there. Just put a little bit in there. That's probably good. Just to thin it out a little. And we'll go ahead and get uh, mix it together and get the sandpaper soaked in it and we're just going to apply it with this sandpaper. Now this is 400 grit sandpaper and if I need to do another coat I'll step up to 600 grit and we'll just go ahead and start applying it to the whole guitar and hopefully work up a little bit of a slurry. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing this so just Trying to get some in there. Yeah, it's coming off pretty quick, so. There we go. Let's switch sides here. I had too much on that side over there, but that's okay. I'm trying to sand with the grain mostly. I'm trying to avoid um, doing swirls if I can. Because 400 grit is still fairly visible scratches. 
compared to other grits. Okay. This wood is definitely still soaking some of it up though, so I might not have put enough on to begin with. I can start to feel it getting a little bit easier to sand though. I don't need to tape anything off this time because I already did. So everything already has two coats, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little dust on there. That's good. Okay. This backside's still soaking up quite a bit, so I don't think I put enough back here for sure. I'm not putting a lot of pressure either. Just enough to kind of get this going. I'm hoping this will add just a little bit more sheen as well to the guitar. We'll see. Yeah, the center section is definitely still soaking some up, that's for sure. I can tell because it's drying rather quickly. Let's focus a bit more on this section over here. Tilt this up a little bit, see if I can get on this side. And tilt this up on this end a little bit and get on this side as well. Yeah, I got a couple on the fretboard. Ooh, and I had some drip down onto the front of the guitar. Okay, I gotta flip this over now. Okay, I need to wipe that off. Should probably just go ahead and sand this side while we're at it. Okay, well, too late. It's my fault.
wipe off most of that excess. It's already smoother. Kind of a bummer, I did get a little bit of the, that on the fretboard, that's okay. Should be fine. Okay, let me flip this over again and wipe off anything that's still on here. I need to watch this over the next couple hours, make sure nothing else seeps out because it did look like some of the wood was still soaking up some of the oil. Make sure we don't get any more of those little water spots. Yeah, it looks like most of those are gone, which is good. Okay, so I think I'm good to leave that for a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and rest it up against the fretboard side. And uh, I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so here's, here's a better view of those spots that you can see. Now I'm gonna wipe this real quick and it will disappear and then you guys can watch those reappear as this keeps going, so hold on. Let me wipe it real quick. Very gently. And you'll notice those are basically gone. There's a couple small ones here. Like that, and then we're just gonna sit here <clears throat> and watch them reappear. See, they're starting to become a little bit more pronounced. That means the wood is still so or seeping some of that out, and so I have to keep at this for a while until those go away. Well, I kind of owe you guys an apology because we should be doing the fretwork right now, which it looks like I'm taped up for, but I've actually already done it. And the reason you guys didn't get to see that is because I was stupid and forgot to film it. And the reason why I forgot to film it is because as I started to tape everything up and get prepped to start the video, I noticed there was a slight warp in my neck. And so the neck actually tapers a little bit this way as it gets towards here. So this is the highest spot on my neck. And that kind of threw me for a little bit of a panic and I started doing my research and everything, figuring out, oh, co oh God, the neck is set. I can't make a new neck, so what the hell am I gonna do? And it turns out, I, kinda, I tried to measure it as best as I could, didn't work very well, but it turns out as long as it's curved this way, it should still be comfortable to play and shouldn't mess up any of the intonation or any of the um, string action because it's gonna be straight along its individual plane um, as long as it's not cupped or anything like that. But as long as it's straight, it's just twisted, it should be okay. 
Now, obviously that's not ideal, but here's the real challenge is it also depends on how how much twist there is because there's a, if there's enough twist, you're gonna have a really hard time leveling the frets. And that's basically exactly what happened to me. So what ended up happening is I took a Fret Guru sanding beam, I taped everything up, I started sanding it down. I was at it for a couple hours, mixing between 100, 120 grit and 240 grit sandpaper. And I got to a point where I felt like I was now taking too much off of the first fret. Um, so the first fret still has enough meat to be safe, but I got nine, like 90% 90 of the way up the fretboard completely flat. Um, it's only these back sections right here that I couldn't quite touch. So what ended up working out for me is just doing some fall off on the back. So what I ended up doing um, was taping right here, doing the beam, and then t um, tapering off those back sections, and I was able to hit those. So as far as I can tell, I've got a pretty decent level on here, but uh, it definitely freaked me out a lot. So after I did the level, I went ahead and I sanded over the entire thing with 220 very lightly so I didn't end up changing the geometry of my freshly leveled frets um, just to get some of those real rough scratches out. And then I ended up sanding each individual fret up to 2000 grit. So I think my progression was 220, 320, 400, 800, 1000, 1500, and 2000 grit. And it is almost mirror polish, but it's still got a little bit of a satin sheen to it. So what I'm gonna do now, and I've just retaped this, is I'm gonna go ahead and take a Dremel and take some of my um, compound and we're gonna go ahead and polish these frets up. And actually before we do that, I think I'm gonna take a small needle file and make sure any remaining little sharp edges um, are gone. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first and then we'll take the Dremel out and we'll start, uh, start buffing. Well, there you have it. We finally finished all the construction for Project Mayor, and we're now ready to go ahead and install the pickups, do some wiring, uh, install the tuners, make a nut, and string it up. And so that is the plan for next week. Now, a little bit of recap of what we did is after everything was machined and ready, 
We went ahead and we set the neck, we sanded everything up to 220 grit, and then I applied three coats of Danish oil, and on the third coat, I went ahead and sanded, or wet sanded with a little bit of Danish oil and mineral spirits, and I think that gave just the right amount of sheen, maybe slightly less than what I was hoping for. Because as you can see, it does have a decent amount of sheen to it, um, but it's not so much that it like sticks to your hand, right? It, especially on the neck, like you want it to feel quick on the neck and I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. Um, I think the figure and the colors all came out exactly as I was hoping for. And we have also uh, leveled, recrowned, dressed and polished the frets. And as you can tell, they are like little mirrors. And so I'm really happy at least with that part of the frets. Now, as you guys saw in the video, we do have a problem and I'm hoping that this problem will be will be resolved with uh, some string tension. So we do have a slight warp in the neck and I ordered some medium gauge uh, 10 to 46 balanced tension strings from NYXL. And what I'm hoping will happen is that it will kind of pull this a little bit straighter, although that may end up messing up some of my leveling. So we will see um, once we've got it under string tension for about a week because Wood can still move, even if you have everything set up correctly, you've sealed it. Once you've got it under string tension, some stresses uh, are imparted on the neck and you can really see what that neck is made out of. So I won't really know if that's a problem until it's ready to play. And so at that point, we'll go ahead and address it. But for right now, I am super happy with the way this has turned out. And I think we are ready to go ahead and get it assembled and start playing it. So until that video, which should be coming out in the next week or two, this is Austin signing out.